Greetings, Weary Wanderer, and welcome back to Lonely TTRPG, the solo actual play and review podcast. This week, we are playing Lighthouse at the End of the World, a solo journaling game by Ken Lowry. So, Lighthouse at the End of the World is a wretched and alone game, and this will be kicking off our spooky month spectacular. Yes, this month I am playing horror games for the entire month. So, to start off, your lot in life. For reasons of your own, you have taken up a post watching over the lighthouse at the furthest reaches of civilization. You will maintain the lighthouse so that the world's commerce doesn't dash against the craggy shore of this faraway place. It is a curious thing, this island. It oversees a passage that is at once vital to the world trade and as remote as any post on Earth. Many ships have come to ruin in the treacherous waters over the centuries, and your lighthouse is packed to the rafters with salvage from those wrecks. Everything here, your furniture, your silverware, your library, is a mismatched assortment of flotsam and jetsam meant for someplace else. You have neighbors. The adjacent island is home to a penal colony, the southernmost human settlement in all the world. You interact with them little enough, but they are never completely out of sight, nor very far from your thoughts. And you are not alone. Those countless shipwrecks have brought not just salvage to your shores, but the spirits of the restless who died in them. They are numerous. Ten, at least. Maybe more. The passage of time has worn away any memories of who they once were, and they are by turns friendly, jealous, seductive, and ravenous. You are alive. They are not. Every night and every day, they wait for their chance to seize your body and make it theirs. And if they cannot have your flesh, then they'll settle for your soul. Tend the light. Fend off the dead. Contemplate what came before and what may yet be. If you are to come out the other side of this self-inflicted ordeal, you cannot do it as the person you once were. All right, so Lighthouse at the End of the World is a tabletop role-playing game. Like many role-playing games, it asks you to take on the persona of a fictional character. You'll interpret tools of chance, dice, cards, coins, and react to the world as your character would. Then write down the results. Put simply, the rules of play generate events and you write how your characters react to them. In fact, how you write is one of your most powerful tools for re revealing your character. Think about what is important to your character and what isn't. And what is easy to talk about and what is painful or elusive. Then pack a trunk and make your goodbyes. Your ship leaves shortly. So to play, you're going to need a deck of cards. You're going to need a six-sided die a coin, a tumbling block tower, 10 tokens, a map, and something to write with. So pretty standard setup for any Wretched and Alone game. Now, we will not be using the tumbling block tower. We will be using our 100 D6 dice pool. Once again, for those rules, anytime we would pull from the tower, instead, we're going to roll our pool and subtract any ones we get from that. For our coin, we're just going to roll a regular dice, and that will be even or odd. Now, for safety, remember, Lighthouse at the End of the World deals with themes of isolation, shame, regret, and glancingly, suicidal thought. By design, your character is almost certainly doomed. Take your time, stop if you need to, and take advantage of the unreliable narrator trope during the writing phase to elude things you would rather not talk about. So, again, like any of these games, safety is a big deal, all right? Do what you need to for yourself. If that means stopping for a while, stop. It's no big deal. It's solo. There are no rules. There are slight rules, but there really are no rules. It's your game. Play it how you want and what is enjoyable for you. So, for the rules of play, all right, we're going to have our first entry. During Lighthouse at the End of the World, you will be journaling the things that happen to you. The first entry will act as sort of a prologue. Begin by flipping your coin. Heads indicate you are writing letters to someone at home. Work up a vague sketch of who this person is and what they might be to you, but feel free to leave the details vague. Tales means that no one is waiting for you. You are writing a journal, perhaps to never be read by anyone but you. 
Think about how you came to be on your own and whether or not this was by design. Think briefly about why you would take such a remote post for such a long stretch of time. Any specific catalyst is unlikely to be something you're proud of. Again, you can stay vague for now. A simple hunch is enough. That's all you're going to need to know for now. The rest will emerge during play. So then with that, like the rest of our Wretched and Alone games, everything else is going to be roll your dice to determine how many cards you draw for the day, pull that many cards, resolve those cards, and then we're going to go ahead and do our journal entry. So just like the last couple Wretched and Lone games we have played, we're going to draw all of our cards, make a quick jot of what it's supposed to be, and then we will construct our narrative for the day based on that. For evidence of notes, consult the following pages each time you draw a card. Visualize your response to the prompt and complete the instructions. Most often, this will involve pulling from the tower, or in this case, rolling our dice pool. If at any point you draw two aces and two eights of any suit, the dead man's hand. Consult ill-fated conclusions and follow the instructions. So for our deck, hearts are going to be our keepsakes, curiosities, and crude salvage. Clubs, maintenance of the self and otherwise. Diamonds, the past intrudes. And spades, an interlude. Now during this, when you roll a six or five and six, if you've also pulled the ace of diamonds, you uncover the origin of one of the ghosts, which allows you to end its suffering, and consequently, a measure of your own. You may take as much or as little time and care with this step as you like. That, too, says something about your character. First, take out your map tr to chart the course of the ghost's doomed voyage. Flip a coin for the point of origin on heads, mark the port of origin as somewhere warm, on tails somewhere cold. Use the tables on the back of the book to pick names for the ship and the port or make up your own. Draw an unbroken line showing the ship's journey from the port of origin to the lighthouse. Flip the coin again to determine whether its destination was in warm or cold climate. Name the destination as you did the port. Draw a broken line from the lighthouse to the destination to denote the leg of the journey the ship never took. If you cannot or would rather not draw on a map, simply list these facts together. If you have drawn any heart cards, pick the piece of salvage tied to the ghost. If not, make up your own, a bobble, a keepsake, a token of the ghost's past life. Name the ghost, consider what you will write about them in today's missive. Then remove the token from the Ace of Hearts. Put the ghost to rest and continue your vigil. So, for ill-fated conclusions, if at any point your tower falls, your mental state frays enough for the ghost to gain one last fatal foothold. If you pull all four kings, that signals the chaos of the world reaching out to claim you. And if you ever pull two pair of aces and eights, one of the ghosts takes you in a moment of weakness. So, for a minor correction, the only time you are to remove tokens is after you have pulled the king of hearts. So we're going to go ahead and modify the rules just slightly more. And we are going to start with our King of Hearts already polled. After all, this is a Wretched and Alone game. I have not won any of those yet. So really don't think that's going to make much of a difference for us. All right. So we went ahead and set up our board. So first things first, let us go ahead and roll 1d6 to determine whether or not somebody is waiting for us or not. So evens will be heads, odds will be tails. Evens, heads, I got someone waiting for me back home. So we're going to go ahead and say that this is my beloved. Yep, we're going to say that this is my beloved. We had a surprise pregnancy. And this lighthouse gig was the best way to set our family up. We knew like we knew it was going to be a long time away from each other and that it was not going to be pleasant. Don't get me wrong, but this was the best way to secure the future of our child was to go hang out here in the middle of nowhere, way down here in order to ensure that our child will have a somewhat comfortable life. So first thing, we're going to go ahead and shuffle our deck. We're using a digital deck today. 
and let us see how many tasks we have to do on day one. Five. That's awesome. Always love these games when you start out with a strong five. And first up, we have a king. Great start. Great start because I chose the easy way of pulling a king out. And we get the king of spades, which is going to be an omen, a dire one. Do not discard. Place it nearby where you can see it. So a dire omen for the nine of spades. A passing fisherman relates rumors of war, which stirs the ghost into a frenzy of dark memories. What is your own experience of war? Pull from the tower. So we will go ahead and roll our 100 D6 and do some counting. So that's 14 ones, which brings our dice pool down to 86. And then another king. So the king of diamonds. In a moment of weakness, you confess something painful. The reason you came to be at the lighthouse. What is it and what do the ghosts do with that information? The two of clubs. What strange new sleeping habit have you picked up since your arrival? And for our final task for today. Woo, I was nervous. The six of spades. A message in a bottle washes ashore, bearing coordinates and a sketched face that looks shockingly like your own. What do the maps say your coordinates refer to? And we need to pull from the tower on this one. So rolling 86 D6. And that was painful. That was 17 ones, bringing our dice pool down to 69. Ha. <laughs> Nice. Except not. We want nice high numbers here. All right. So, day one. My dearest beloved, I have received so many strange sights and experiences, even in so short a time. Just today, a bottle washed ashore near the lighthouse, bearing a picture that looked remarkably like me though weathered and haggard and near death and the only reason that I was able to even find this bottle was because a vulture sat atop it pecking at it and staring at me before basically dropping it at my feet and I don't know a worse omen that I could think of. And this vulture just made me remember the time that the time in the war when, when we hid in the trench and the vulture circled overhead and just in the next trench over, they were feasting and it's, as painful as it is to say, it's good that I'm not home. Our child should not have to see this weakness in their father. Hopefully my time here will be able to help burn that weakness away, to, to cleanse that weakness. Certainly, given enough time being sprayed by the sea salt should cleanse anything. I, I only hope that it can help cleanse me of this cowardice but at least at least i do get enough rest one interesting thing working a lighthouse is you your main busy times are at night and i was i was expecting the switch to be hard I was expecting the change in time to be difficult, but working working at night has helped has helped to keep that. Though sometimes I do worry for my sanity as I as I seem to see things as ethereal orbs dance at the corner of my sight. I hear whispers in the shadows taunting me for running away, for hiding when 
I lay down and I know that I know that they are right. All right. And before we wrap up day one, the last thing that we will do is real world 1d6 to see if we can lay one of these ghosts to rest. And we got a four, so that is a negative. That is a negative. We do not lay any of these ghosts to rest. So let us roll once more to see how many tasks we have for our next day. Another five tasks. So day two, we have five tasks and 69 dice in our pool. So let's go ahead and get these drawn out and organized. All right. So the three of spades, you wake to the shrill of dozens of seagulls feasting on a beached carcass of a whale. Do you partake? And we roll from our tower and that is another 16 dice removed, taking our dice pool down to 53. Next card. The five of spades. I've gotten all the spades and all the kings up front. This game is not trying to do well for any type of timeline. Five of spades, sunlight, beautiful, all seeing sunlight, turning the sea and the sky brilliant hues on a crisp, clear day. Why do you shun it? And roll from our tower. So rolling 53d6. All right, that wasn't a bad roll. We only got six. We rolled six ones, bringing our dice pool down to 47. Task three, the Jack of Clubs. Got really worried there for a second. All right, the Jack, you hurt yourself gravely during the day's chores and conduct impromptu surgery to save yourself from turning for the worst. This isn't the first time you've done something like this, is it? And now we need to roll from the tower once again. So rolling 47 D6. And we got 11. Bringing our dice pool down to 36. Task number four. The four of clubs. You promised yourself you would return to the world improved. What skill are you cultivating in the privacy of the lighthouse? Are you succeeding? And for the final card, the queen of clubs. The wick extinguishes and it takes you all night to light it again. What miracle do you pull off at the last minute to stop a freighter running aground? And we need to roll 36 D6. And we got eight ones bringing our dice pool down to 28 my beloved i woke late this afternoon to the cry of gulls and as i approached my window to see what had them in a frenzy there was a beached whale on the shore near the lighthouse and they were feasting upon this bloated carcass and i felt the revulsion Though maybe it was just the glare of the sun that was revolting me. I have already adapted to the late night hours and the sun is just a painful reminder of the life that I've left with you and our child. And... I hate it for its memory. I have, I have decided to work on my wood carving. You always encourage me to do it. And it is a skill that I never allowed myself time to practice. But when you're out here at the edge of the world with nothing but time and no one to even converse with, well, you need something to keep yourself occupied. Unfortunately, while I was working with a piece of wood today, my hand slipped and the knife dug into my arm. I had to quickly apply a pressure dressing. And after several minutes when the bleeding had 
slowed. I grabbed a bottle of, I grabbed a bottle of the high spirit alcohol and poured it on the wound to help sterilize it before grabbing my needle and thread and sewing my arm back together. My fingers move sluggishly, but they still move with time. They, with time, there should be no difference. Unlike the other men whom I have had to help in similar fashion in the trench, in the trench, everybody's a doctor when the doctor is two trenches away. There's only so much reasonable effort one can make in order to get someone back. Sometimes all you could do was what you could to just try and help. As the sun set, a storm came in and it blew the windows of the lighthouse open and dampened the wick causing it to go out this of course is this of course is dangerously bad as the ships rely on being able to see the lighthouse in order to avoid the rocks and i could hear in the distance the horn of what sounded like a freighter and I knew that I had to get the wick up quickly. Luckily, I still had some of that. I still had some of that alcohol left. So I grabbed, I grabbed one of the bandages. And after re-securing the windows, I soaked the bandage in this alcohol. And I placed it in the, I placed it in the mirror assembly and lit it just until just until i could get the wick replaced luckily the freighter avoided the rocks and we avoided adding to the ghosts who continue to laugh and taunt me i look forward to the days when this is done and i can return to you and our child and the light before we move on to day three let us roll 1d6 to see if we settle one of these ghosts that is another four. That is another negative. No ghost settling. So moving on to day three, our dice pool is at 28. We have three out of four kings already in play. Let's see how many tasks we have for today. A blessed two. So for our first task, though, we have the two of spades, which is great. I know that's going to be a tower roll because spades always are. So the two of spades on your daily walk, you find something grotesque, an alien caught in a tide pool. Do you keep it? And for our final task today, the eight of diamonds, the warmth of sunrise stirs a memory of a childhood trip. One you had forgotten about until now. Where did you go? Why did you never go back? All right. And now we need to roll our dice pool for the two of spades so that's 28 d6 and blissfully only got five ones so that takes us down to 23 in our dice pool my beloved while walking today i found the most interesting creature in a tide pool it was almost like a jellyfish or an octopus it was spineless almost amorphous in shape a blob of membrane and tentacle and antenna twitching and pulsing in the shallow water alone alone in its own world an uncaring world that left it here to potentially dry out and die in the sun and i almost i almost rescued the thing i almost took it back to the lighthouse with me just to just because of how much it reminded me of myself left here to alone adrift though where this creature was in fear of drying out i am in fear of drowning of being sucked into the sea it 
it calls to me like it did that one summer in my youth when we went to the beach. My family went to the beach. And I stood there on the edge of the beach staring into this great, vast nothingness that was the ocean filled with awe and terror. And it is difficult to... It is difficult to put into words the feeling that I got at the time as a child staring at this incomprehensible mass before me. And while we never went back to that beach, after all, we were from the main, we were from the Midland and this was like a special one-time thing to the coast. I still remember that that sense and I never I never felt it again even even when I boarded the boat to cross overseas for the war there was never that sense and as I stand here on the lighthouse still I lack that sense of awe I'm just I'm just filled with the terrible dread of the uncaring vastness before me and before we wrap up our day once more rolling 1d6 to try and settle a ghost five we got closer but no ghost settling so moving on to day four we still have three of four kings all 10 tokens all 10 ghosts on the board and our dice pool is at 23 so rolling to see how many tasks we have for today another two it's almost like the universe is trying to take it easy on me. Unless this is a king. Aha! Three of clubs. You discover a naval mine caked with rust and trailing a broken chain lodged in the rocky cliff below the lighthouse. What, if anything, do you do about this? Pull from the tower. So time to roll that 23d6 and see how low it gets. That is another four ones. So we drop from 23... 219 2319 but here at the end of the world there are no kids on the loose just ourselves and our ghosts and the three of hearts looking glass foggy and bent out of true at least until you repaired it but once you do you see something out there you wish you hadn't what was it and pull from the tower so time to roll our 19 on the tower. And that one hurt. That was 7. So that takes us down to 12. My beloved, I do not know how much longer I can last out here. While walking, I noticed a I noticed that the waves had brought an old mine up alongside the cliff. And there is there's nothing that I can do about this. This is way too far down. I don't know anything about these explosives. There is there's no hope of me doing anything. And yet the temptation to the temptation to throw a rock at it to see if it still functioned, if it would still go off, if it would still serve its purpose of destruction. And bring that destruction upon the cliff and the tower. This was made all the stronger as I fixed the looking glass. And I looked out to sea and again was struck by the vast nothingness around me. This task was too much of a weight. This task was, this task was too much. I don't. I, I could never have guessed how difficult this would be. And now as I stand here looking out into nothing, seeing nothing, I, I, I don't know how to go on. And before we finish our day, time to roll 1d6 for our ghost friends. We rolled a 2. We still have all 10. All right, moving on to day five. Let us roll to see how many tasks we have. 
Another two. Now I think they are taunting me. All right, so we got the Ace of Hearts and the Eight of Spades. So for the Ace of Hearts, you have discovered a stack of ship manifests hidden away by the previous lighthouse keeper. Among the hundreds of names within are the 10 that belong to your ghosts. Pull from the tower. Do not discard this card. Instead, set it to one side in plain view. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to lie to you right now. I was supposed to have the Ace of Hearts out the entire time for the ghosts. I pulled the King of Hearts. Now, what we're not going to do is we're not going to try to figure out how to get the king back in the deck. We're going to leave it out. Because, after all, we have made a mistake. And I have a feeling that our ghost aided in that mistake. So, let's see what story these ghosts have to finish telling. Will they let me go mad or was this all a ploy in order to get control of my body? But we do have to roll from our tower. So rolling 12d6. And that was two ones. So our dice pool drops down to 10. It will go into single digits next though because we have an eight. Eight of spades. One of the ghosts is barely sentient. Instead, it repeats its own death every day at the same time. What is the death? Why does it feel familiar? There we go. And rolling our dice tower, that is another three ones, bringing our dice pool down to seven. My beloved, while going through some of the stored paperwork, I found, I found the names of the ghosts that have been tormenting me. One so in particular, Jeremy. Jeremy was the previous lighthouse keeper the one whom I replaced and now I know the reason for replacing Jeremy because every day at sunset without fail I see Jeremy's ghost walk off the edge of the cliff and after after so long I I don't blame him any longer and I fear that or I hope that one sunset I will walk off with him and to roll our 1d6 to find out if we lay Jeremy to rest that is a 5 that is a negative so moving on into day 6 let us find out how many tasks we have today that is also 5 that is a Big number of tasks. And at this point, I feel like there's a high likelihood there's a king in here somewhere. And we got the five of clubs, jack of diamonds, ace of clubs, queen of hearts, ten of diamonds. I have a feeling that today is the day we go insane. We do not get taken over by ghosts. But let us see what our prompts are. So five of clubs. Five of clubs. There are complicated mechanical works in the basement whose functions are critical yet obscure. How do you manage? Does one of the ghosts help or hinder you? And we need to pull from our tower from this one. We need to roll from the tower. So rolling 76. And we got 1-1. One, one. Bringing our dice pull down to 6. For the Jack of Diamonds, the ghosts slither their fingers into your psyche and play act a dormant memory they find there. What is this play? And rolling our 66. Mm. Three ones. On to the Ace of Clubs. A promised resupply arrives without incident, and with it, a delicacy from the homeland. What is it, and why does it revive your mood? The next time you're told to pull from the tower, you may choose not to. Which is good, because I am I have a feeling this Queen of Hearts is going to be a pull. A revolver and three bullets. Enough to permanently alter the tone of your stay here. Not nearly enough should the penal colony next door erupt. Where do you keep it? 
And we are supposed to pull from the tower on this. We are not going to do it on this one. And finally, 10 of diamonds. You catch yourself singing a favorite childhood tune. And with that, you start to realize you've been singing it for hours. What is it and what brought it to mind? My beloved, today was today was difficult. The machinery in the basement is difficult to figure out. Luckily, the ghosts have no problem helping me maintain this lighthouse. They they've had no issue helping with keeping this weird equipment running but unfortunately to do so they have to play in my brain and they play in my mind and while they do they continue to play these scenes from the war these scenes from the trenches Luckily, I received the cookies that you sent me today and you have, you have no idea how much they meant to me. I will admit that I spared no thought to rationing. I, I ate them all in one sitting. They were so delicious. Even, even stale, they were phenomenal. And I was so happy that I just, I sat in my chair and I sang, I, I sang a silly childhood song as I spun around in my chair, singing round and round the mulberry bush. And I didn't realize how long I had been sitting and singing until at one point when I said, pop goes the weasel. I squeezed the trigger on the revolver and I heard the hammer fall with a loud metallic click. And that jolted me from the song. It was already dark by that point, or this, it was already dimming by that point. And I don't even, I don't even remember grabbing the revolver from under my pillow. It was just in my hand. And it just felt like the most natural thing. Luckily, luckily, only one of the three bullets was in it. And I keep it in the, I keep it in the last chamber because after, after all, like I said, I only have three bullets and that is, well, that really only serves one purpose. If, if a dangerous situation arises, I I really only have one option with that limited ammo. Now time to see how we do on settling a ghost to rest. That is a one. That is not going to do it. And that will bring us to day seven. So for day seven, I still have 10 tokens on my ace of hearts. I have three out of my four kings out. And I only have three dice left in my pool. How many tasks shall I do today? Three tasks. I have three dice. We have three tasks. All right, first up, we have the four of spades, the eight of hearts, and finally, the 10 of hearts. So for the four of spades, that is going to be the distant salvo of warships carries across the calm waters, and not for the first time. Who is at war? Why does this escalation who is at war and why does this escalation make you fear for the future? And we also need to roll from our tower. So roll 3d6. Outstanding. We do not have to pull anything. All right. Eight of hearts. Jewelry. Gaudy. Old. Luminous. Worth a fortune anywhere but here. What is engraved on it? And for the ten of hearts... A musical instrument. What is it and how fine is its make? What surprising trinket do you find in its case? My beloved, I heard cannons in the distance today. And it seems that... It seems that the war will never truly be over. 
that there will always be fighting and that it will always be just over the horizon. I disappeared from the sounds into another part of the lighthouse where I found a where I found a violin case and it seemed well made if a little waterlogged but tucked inside this violin was a locket beautifully made and it seemed to be carved with someone's initials no doubt this was meant as a gift for someone a gift that was never delivered that never reached its final destination just just as i will i will likely never reach mine all right and now to see if we settle a ghost we do not settle a ghost so that is it for day seven day eight we still have three dice in our pool time to find out how many tasks for the day five this may be our last day folks I know I said that the last time. I don't think I have too many get out of jail free cards left. For cards, we got the seven of spades, which will be a roll. The two of diamonds, the four of diamonds, the ten of clubs, and the two of hearts. So the seven of spades. Blackbird circled the lighthouse for hours upon hours and then vanish. What do you think you heard in their ceaseless crowing? And we need to roll our three D6. And that is one, one. That takes our dice pool down to two. For the two of diamonds. Recall how you felt when you saw the lighthouse for the first time. What do you feel when you look at it now? Four of diamonds. You brought a favorite book to read and reread during your time. What is it? Ten of clubs. You can make a meal of anything, which is fortunate considering the state of your stores. Where did you learn such resourcefulness? And finally, the two of hearts. Fine china and silverware strapped in place in a wood case of sturdy make. What initials do the plateware bear? Who did you know with the same initials? My beloved, today the blackbird circled overhead. Over and over and over and over again and again and again with their ceaseless kind. Why they insist on staying here, I do not understand. I do not understand why I stay here. I remember not too long ago looking at this place with a sense of adventure a full hearty adventure a foolish pride thinking that thinking that i could survive this and now all i feel is now all i feel is nothing i lost the book that i originally brought i don't even remember what it's called it it doesn't matter anymore I may have I may have thrown it off the side of the cliff. I along with some fancy china set I just to hear the sound of the dishware breaking it almost reminded me of someone back home but at this point at this point home no longer exists all that all that is left is the nothingness of the sea before me and the eternal light that I must broadcast into it. And this task is beyond the strength of mortal man. All right. And rolling 1d6 to see if we release a ghost. We do not. Moving on into day nine. We have to be drawing to a close here soon. It is getting late. I need this game to end. How many tasks for today? Six. There's my six. Been waiting for you. All right. Let's go ahead and arrange these six cards right quick. Hopefully one of them is a king. All right. Six of clubs. Queen of spades. Jack of spades. 
eight of clubs, nine of hearts, three of diamonds. Close. All right, so for the six spade, or correction, six clubs, you have two hours of free duties every afternoon. For the queen of spades, a change in the wind brings the sound of work shanties from the penal colony, a single line from the tune, claws at your mind. And we need to roll our 2d6. And that is 1-1. One, one. Our dice pool is now down 2-1. For the Jack of Spades. A late night cigarette invites a strangely candid conversation with one of the ghosts. And we need to roll the tower. I said I rolled 2 instead of 1, but neither of them were a 1. The 8 of Clubs. The warden of the penal colony visits and requests your help repairing something peculiar. What is it? Nine of hearts. A child's toy, a curiosity. Why does it pain you to think of children and their playthings? Roll on the tower. That is a five. So safe-ish. And three of diamonds. You met a ghost once before. You think. What do you remember? What are you uncertain about? Pull from the tower. My beloved, the warden came by today and asked me with help on the searchlights. He wanted he wanted help with coming up with a backup in case the electricity fell, failed and how to how to rig emergency flame lights. So, of course, I went over to the penal colony and I showed him and while I was there, the workers, they had a song that they sang. And all I can remember is, all I can remember is look down, look down as they sang over and over and over again, look down, look down. And that pound is that, that still pounds in my head, in my mind, I can hear it. And I wish I could just look down, but everything, everything is reminding me of home now. Every, like I found a toy today and it reminded me of the child that I'm not going to see the child that I am. I've left fatherless and likely penniless on this foolish pursuit. I have no doubt that I will not be returning home. There is there is no way that I can be making it home now. And I doubt that the I doubt that the company will honor its agreement with a corpse. I mean, it's there are so many ghosts here to to agree with me on that that I I don't know why I, I wish I hadn't left. I should have been there for you and for our child. And I'm sorry. All right. And rolling 1D6. Oh, we were so close. It dangled. It dangled on the six, but it went to a four. So we released no ghost today. Moving on into day 10 with one dice left in our pool. How many tasks shall we do? Another five. I've been saying it's the last day for the past three days. Who knows? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe my depression doesn't match the game. Maybe I should be more optimistic. What do you think, cards? What do you think, ghosts? What do you think, audience? Let me know in the comments. Ten of spades. Not looking good for optimism. Seven of hearts. Nine of clubs. Ace of diamonds. And nine of diamonds. So for the ten of spades, thrice you see the silhouette of a man on the island watching you. You never catch him or see him again, but you find something you're convinced he left for you. What did he leave? It may not matter. Rolling 1d6. And there it is. That is our final one. Our dice pool is now empty. So, if at any point during the game, the tower falls, your mental state frays enough for the ghost to gain one last fatal foothold in their war for your mind and body. In their hunger, they take you. 
obliterating the, your soul as they do. The game ends here. This game is, believe it or not, based on a real place. The San Juan de Salvamento Lighthouse, more commonly known as Faro del Fin del Mundo, which operated on Isla de los Estados, off the coast of Tierra del Fuego from 1884 to 1900. The lighthouse was, among other things, the inspiration for Jules Verne's novel, also titled The Lighthouse at the End of the World. As in this game, it was adjacent to a penal colony, which was the southernmost human settlement in the world at the time. So that is The Lighthouse at the End of the World. A great entry into the Wretched and Alone franchise. A great entry into the Wretched and Alone genre. Definitely, definitely hit the isolation well. Definitely hit the depression well. Maybe it was my own depression coming out. Who knows? Was I too real? But this is why safety tools are so important in a game like this. Remember, if you feel like you're going a little too far, take a break. Change the mood. There was a reason why I was going so over the top on rolling to see if I freed a ghost. Because I needed that. I needed that strong mental break from my journal entry to my next thing. I was getting a little overwhelmed even for myself. So make sure you guys are doing what you need to to take care of yourself. Remember, this is solo play. You have nobody to impress. You have nobody to do anything for except yourself. If it's getting too intense, if it's getting too much, take a break. Go do something else. Go play a nice cozy game like As the Crow Flies, which by all means, you can check out our playthrough of. Just scroll back in the Wayback Machine to one of our first episodes, all right? Go play a fun game. You know, take breaks in the middle of it. This is fine. It's solo. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that you have fun. Now, with all of that, yes, this is a fun game. This is a, like, this is a good, this is a good game. The weakest element to me, honestly, was how the journaling was framed. Because, because you start off with deciding whether or not you are sending letters or writing a personal journal. Regardless of all of that, there are ghosts. And it was hard in the beginning to incorporate the ghosts into the journal. Regardless of, regardless of if I got a prompt or not. Like, even with a prompt, it was difficult. Because, like... Theoretically, my character is supposed to be starting off somewhat sane. They may not believe in ghosts. They may understand how crazy it sounds. You add to that the fact that they are writing to someone back home. And you run into the unreliable narrator issue. All the ghost stuff could have been omitted from the journals, which then detracts a large part from the game because this is a journaling game. So something like something like your visit like something like one of the ghosts visits you at the end of each day or I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. Honestly, I don't. It just I liked the inclusion of the ghosts. It I liked the inclusion of the paranormal. It just it feels hard to do that under the guise of keeping a journal or a log or writing a letter back home like it just it feels difficult with that because you know again you don't want to sound crazy but if you go with the unreliable narrator part then also what's the point like that's the key component of the game but if you just full send then like then you definitely get a chance to enjoy it you definitely get a chance to uh, have fun with it. Even though even though you don't really find out about like who the ghosts are until you pull the ace of hearts, like I almost feel like you should roll them up at the start of the game. Just because you're going to have plenty of spooky things that you're going to have plenty of spooky and ghost related things that it might be nice to know 
who the ghosts are, have some semblance of idea of who the ghosts are. But, you know, that's just me. By all means, again, do what you want. It's solo play. All right. But Lighthouse at the End of the World, great game, great horror, horror game. A wonderful way to kick off a spooky solo month. If you are interested in this game yourself, you can find it at bannerlessgames.itch.io slash lighthouse. And it is currently up for $10 there. So go give it a look, give it a check. Go ahead and pick it up. And if you do, make sure you tell them that Steel Stash sent, sent you. And remember to take care of yourself this spooky season. And I must ask y'all to stay awesome.